everyone, now that we have our player input and our the input system integrated into this project, we can go on to reconstruct our input manager to use this new input system. So if we take a look at our player input manager right now, this works by using the legacy input system to get the key down for the spacebar and the enter key, and then just tell the dialog system to advance. And that works if that's all we want to do, but if we want to provide any sort of expandability or uh, users being able to configure their own controls and what have you, then we're going to need to use this new input system, as well as if we want to support different platforms. It'll just make it so much easier in the long run. So we're going to go ahead and remove, well, we'll actually keep the prompt advanced, but we'll remove update. And so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're using the new input system. And we can do that by specifying the namespace using unity engine dot input system. So now we can use the new input system. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to get a reference to that player input component since that will have our input action asset. And from there, we can grab all the actions and assign the commands to the keys that we'll press. So we need to get a private player input component that we'll just call input. And so the way that this is going to work is once we very first initialize this object, we're going to look through that input component, through the input action asset attached to it, and find all of the actions that we want to assign logic to. In this case, we've only got one action right now, and that is the next action, which is triggered by either the spacebar or the enter key. And when that happens, we want to assign this function to that key, which means we would have to do something like input.actions, where we can reference that action asset. And then inside of brackets, we specify the name of the action that we want to reference. Looking at our input action asset, that is next. So we would specify next in here to access that action. And then we would go ahead and say performed plus equals the command that we want to attach to it, which would be prompt advance. But we're going to have a little error here, and that's because we need to add a little parameter that is required for any sort of function that's going to be loaded into these these commands that could be called. See what we have here in performed is using a delegate type which as you can see here expects an action but that action needs a parameter for the input action dot callback context. That way Whenever these things are performed, they can pass in data related to whatever has triggered it, such as if it's a joystick, you can figure out how much, uh, in what direction it's going, or how hard it's being pressed, or what have you. It passes in data like that. Data you may or may not use, but nonetheless, it's still required for any functions that we're going to associate. So we just need to make sure that prompt advance has input action dot callback context, and we'll just call it C. Even though we're not going to use it, we still need it in there, and now our error has gone away. So we actually have this attached to our object now. But we're not going to leave it like this. In fact, we're going to change this. What we want to do is we want to safeguard ourselves from having any null references or um, bad commands that have been removed that are still trying to be executed, such as if we start and stop the game. Uh, I've had that happen before. so. Really, what we want to make sure is that if ever this component, this player input manager component gets disabled or turned off, then we disassociate the actions from it. And then whenever those keys are pressed, it won't try to perform a logic that may or not may not be there anymore. So whenever we enable this script, we want to make sure the assets or the, the commands are assigned to the actions. And whenever it gets disabled, if ever it gets disabled, we just want to make sure that they're removed. Such as if we move to a different scene and this is not part of the do not destroy on load, then we could actually have this thing re-trigger and add commands that will be duplicates. And it's, it's a big mess if you don't safeguard it right. So let's just go ahead and take care of this by making a private void called on enable and on enable is going to be called anytime this component is activated even on start so from here we can go ahead and assign our actions but it'd be a pain to go through and do that for every single action referencing them by name so instead let's make ourselves a list that will contain all of the actions and their commands that need to be run so we'll make this a private list and this list is going to have a tuple in it Inside of that tuple, we're going to have an input action, which is just going to be our action. 
and then we're also going to have the command that's going to be run, which is of the action type, taking in the input action dot callback context parameter. And this will be our command. And then we're just going to call this actions and set that equal to a new list of those uh, required types. So then what we can do in this instance is we can go ahead and say that actions dot add, and we're going to add a new tuple, which contains our input dot actions, and we're going to find next. So we're going to grab that action, and then we're going to assign prompt advance to it. And all this does is associate those two together within our list, but it's not actually assigned to our action yet. So that's where on enable comes in. We'll go ahead and loop through each one of those. We'll say var uh, input action in actions. For each one of those, we're going to say input action dot action dot performed plus equals the action, which is our command. So that would be the input action dot command. So for each input action, we're going to make sure that it gets associated to that command. And then we'll just copy this paste and say change from on enable to on disable. So if ever it gets turned off or removed, then we're going to make sure that we go through each one of these and just remove it from the commands. Okay, and now we just need to make sure that we actually get that input asset. So input can equal get component player input. But if we call it like this, and we just play our game now, then start is actually going to be called after on enable, which means those actions won't get assigned after they are paired together. And so that means we need to change start to awake, because awake will be called before on enable. So we will go ahead and assign the actions, which maybe we'll go ahead and extract this into a different function, since we'll be adding more later on, private void, and we'll call this initialize actions. Inside of there we'll assign the action and in awake we will initialize our actions. And I'm going to change prompt advance to on next and now we could go ahead and run this. What this is going to do is it's going to do nothing that we'll have to change in the scene. It'll all work as needed here. We've got our player input component and we've got our input manager so if we start, if we look at that next command, we should be able to trigger it by either the space bar or the E key. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so let me press E. E works and spacebar works. And let me just come into the asset here and let's go ahead and add one more binding. This one's going to be the enter key. Then I'll save that. Yeah. And enter works. Okay, so there we have it. We have our input system, which is now registering all these actions to the uh, the input controls that we could change later on and have the player be able to configure if they would like to change things themselves. But really, that's not the main goal. The main goal is to have cross-platform compatibility in case you want to import this into different consoles or different uh, resources, you will have a nice consolidated way of controlling the keys. So that's it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to move on to the auto reader, which you'll notice there's a little text down here. That's actually made in the next video. I had to come back to this one and change a small thing. So that's why that's there. But let's go ahead and move on and I'll see you guys in the next video.